Hey there, YouTube family. This is Josh with Stocks with Josh. And today we're going to do some technicals. We're going to cover about four stocks and two cryptos. Hey, take a minute to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Uh, do not fall for spam in the comments section. It's not me. I will never ask you for money. And anything I say is not a suggestion to buy, sell, or hold a stock. Hey, we got them all covered today. Um, hey, well, today with me, I've got my man, Larry Jones. What's going on? What's up, good people? And uh, hey, we're going to do... They over there now, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Larry's got a lot of cameras. So, uh, But we're going to get on point. We're going to get a lot covered. Yes. Um, I want you guys to get some understanding. You guys are asking me all the time, uh, what's going on with this stock? What's going on with that stock? And I'm going to burn through as much as I can today and give you guys some of that. But also, we're going to be looking at charts. And I'm going to show you what I see in the charts so that you guys can begin to see those same things and you guys can build up your knowledge so you can begin to make uh, better, better trades. So hey, I'm going to take us first into the S&P. Give us, we're going to jump right into that. All right, we're looking at the S&P 5, well, we're not yet. All right, there we go. We're looking at the S&P 500. And uh, earlier on Technical Tuesdays, I pointed out that I believed that we were in a risk range uh, between 4,600 4, and 4,300 or 4,400. 4, we're pretty much in the center of that and we are beginning to curve over. Um, we don't, as I say when I refer to this Gaussian channel, we've not turned green, we do not have a buy signal, but this green day that we had on Tuesday was the pop that we needed to confirm that we're going to digest this and not go to the very bottom of that risk range. But I believe we're going to digest it. I, I think we have a trend line here. I've pointed out to you guys. I would like to see this market move sideways. I do believe that we will have a dip and touch that trend line. And I believe that we're going to move back to the top of that trend line from there. And so uh, there are going to be a couple red days from here. But ultimately, I believe we're moving. Uh, we're going to move towards a bullish trend. So which stocks are we going to look at? So let's jump over into we we are going to look at volta real quick and uh before we begin larry i know that we've covered uh volta on technical tuesdays yes and um you and i have dialogued about uh what we're doing right. i told everybody on technical tuesdays that i got out of my position i didn't have a large position i had really a starter position in it right. and i got i put a stop loss at 295 i got out of it and when we dropped below 270 right. i began to put in some initial orders right and then i put in a recurring order mm -hmm. so every day I'm picking up about 50 bucks. And when we get, when we either turn back to go north or if we turn back and go hard south, right. then I will take a larger position. Yeah, as you know, I swung this, I swung Volta probably seven times and I've made a lot of money. I've rode this one like a pony. And you guys know last year you saw me make 100% on it uh, with a, a large sum of money. But I've been making these 20% ramps, like it runs up 20% and it falls and it runs up 15% and it falls and it runs up 30%, 45% that it falls. And so I've just been in and out, in and out, in and out uh, with Volta. But it's so beat down now, I'm thinking these are some buy and hold because this is EVs, which are just... Uh, going to be massive, you know, by, by 2030, 2026 even. Even by the end of 2025, this stock could be up. I think by the end of 2025, this stock will be up four to five hundred percent. Okay, well, we've looked at Volta EVgo, EV Go. and uh, today Charge I'm going to take yeah. a little look at ChargePoint, okay. right? So what's going on with ChargePoint? Because we made some predictions mm -hmm. with ChargePoint um, early on yes. on Technical Tuesdays. Yes. And uh, hey, let's go look at those predictions and see how they played out. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to suggest to you, and it's always nice to nail it, um, that we did nail it. Uh, early on, when we did Technical Tuesdays about a month ago, uh, we defined for everybody a buy zone, which was between 13, actually it was between 10 and on the high range, $13, right? And we 
told everybody that there was a sell zone. And I haven't updated this chart. This is the exact chart where I left it a mm -hmm. um, couple, you know, about a month ago. Right. And we gave you guys a sell zone that we were going to begin to see some initial pressure around 1779. Mm -hmm. And if you go back here in time, you see that that's exactly what happened. It hit that 1779 and it sold off, giving us another buying opportunity. And we told everybody that the top of that range of a potential take profit was 1950. And I mean, all right guys, that is exactly what it did. That's exactly what it did. To the T. Yes. So I'm going to, we're gonna look at this chart and we're gonna make a new prediction on it. So we came back, right? And again, I want to keep in mind, we're looking at this Gaussian channel mm -hmm. in addition to our buy and take profit zones. Okay, so we came back and we hit the bottom of that Gaussian channel, and then we came back up and tested the high of the take profit that we predicted, which was the 1950 area. Now we've pulled back, okay? And this is where I think we're going to go. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to test again the bottom of this Gaussian channel. Yep which I'm gonna tell you guys is, is looks to me around 1450 to, 50, to 1550. Mm -hmm. We're doing some rearranging here in the yep. office. Larry's giving me a mouse pad. There you go. So, you, so <laughs> no people can say. clanking on the uh, desk. Clink, clink, you guys clink. are missing the behind the scenes action here. <laughs> See there, I gave him I gave <laughs> the mouse pad. mouse pad appeared. <laughs> All right. Okay, so, so um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, now we're having a green day. So I should be, t you know, a lot of people will be telling you, hey, we're moving back up. Uh, we're having a green day. In my view, this is a uh, day of, cons you know, where we're kind of digesting a little bit of the downward trend. I think we're going to move sideways and I think we're going to come back down and still test the bottom of this channel, which I'm saying is between 1450 and 1550. I, I would say that uh, there is some risk here on the bottom of this channel because we could easily come back and also test the high of this buy zone, which is $13. And so I, if you're gonna enter into a new position on ChargePoint, leave yourself a couple buys. Divide your uh, in total investment into a minimum of four purchases. I believe your first purchase would be around that uh, $15 mark. Mm -hmm. I'd make another- First purchase is what you meant to say. Yeah, what did I say? Purchase. <laughs> I do that all the time. Hey man, I'm still getting used to this YouTube game. <laughs> hey man, I jack words. <laughs> So welcome to the party. <laughs> so yeah, so you're gonna be buying the range from 15 to potentially 13. Don't, there's no FOMO here. We don't FOMO. No, we don't. Fear of missing out, yeah. we don't. Uh, I take starter positions that I build upon. I always have cash that I can deploy, always. I'll give you a rule of thumb. Any amount of money that you're thinking to invest in, let's say it's $1,000 into a stock, Right. You really need an additional two grand to provide that trade liquidity if it goes south. Mm -hmm. Now it's the same, if you have $100 to put into a stock, you need an additional $200 to provide that $100 some liquidity if it goes south. Right, let but, me say this. Yeah. Let's say you, you buy it at the, at the purchase price, right? And for those of you that are new. Sometimes you'll buy a stock if you're new and you know, I've had stock to crash as much as 50, 60%, you know, especially when I first started. But what you can do if you're risk averse or risk off is once you buy it, right? Let's say, what was the buy-in price again? Around $15. Okay, these are suggestions. 15, Anything? 15, 50. 15, 50. So you could buy it at 15, 50-ish, right? And the second you buy it, you could put a stop loss in. Absolutely. Like at 5%. So, as soon as you buy it, you can turn right around the second you buy it, calculate what 15% is, minus the 15%, and put a stop loss there if you're risk adverse. But understand that it could go down, trigger your stop loss, and come back up. But in a volatile season, like it still is, it's kind of smart. You could put it at 10% if you, can if you can afford that type of risk level. But start it right away in this season. Now, I don't have stop losses on all of the time, but in a season like this, you wanna be careful. Yeah, I think that's a great suggestion. Because I'm buying the range on this, and I'm considering the top of the range to be 1550 and the bottom of the range to be 
twelve fifty potentially. Right. Um, I would have on this particular trade, I'd have a very low stop loss, but I'll show it to you in the right. charts. So and you're that's aware a of good it. thing, right? And so now you don't do the percent; you could do a hard stop loss at say twelve fifteen. Yeah, I would agree. Yes. So yeah, so let me get you into our charts. And uh, yeah, so at the bottom of this buy zone, we are probably at the under $12. If we, if the market fell apart and I would be buying all the way down to this, to this $12 range, but I would also have a stop loss uh, probably at $11. Uh, but to me, I don't see that in this trade, and it's hard for me to even um, encourage something that I don't see. Mm -hmm. I think that ChargePoint is at the bottom of its uh, price. We don't know exactly where the market's going, but I think we, we could potentially test that lower range. But again, I'm accumulating at 1550 and down, and I'm happy to do it. And I always have a little bit extra in case I need to put in some more. And what I would say about charge point, it being the biggest, now we're getting into some fundamentals. We're mixing fundamentals Let's do with it. technicals. Charge point has 70% of the market share in North America as far as charge, charging stations uh, for electric vehicles, right? So here's what I would suggest because it's charge point. I would suggest uh, clicking his links below. I would suggest downloading both Weeble and Moomoo. Do your swing trading in Weeble, right? Do your holding in Moomoo. So I would start buying long-term in Moomoo is what I would do. Fund that account. For those of you that's downloaded Moomoo, make sure you fund it, okay? And then you could hold that at these low prices, right? But then you can swing it in uh, Moom you could swing it in Weeble because he's going to give you some buys, and some ins and outs, right? When it absolutely tanks and you get it at that very low price, you want to hold this. Why? Because it's an emerging market. We still need a half a million charging stations in America alone. I think that's great. So let's let's cover a couple more stocks that you guys have asked for. I'm going to go into what's next here. So we're not just trying to give you guys hot stocks. We want you guys to be financially set for life. We're trying to create generational wealth, right? Let me know and well, I'll just go, I'll handle this for you. So um, I, I'm going to be quiet from here and let you blow through, so, <laughs> blow through the rest of these so uh, it's not a long video. Okay, here we go. All we're right, gonna look we go. at some uh, Mullen, right? And uh, you know, I get a lot of, lot of questions about Mullen. Um, I'm going to tell you guys that we again are in this downward trend uh, with the Gaussian channel. We have not printed a green. We have come to the bottom of the channel, which I consider a buy right now. I think that this is probably going to work within this channel constraint. We're still um, consolidating, I believe. Um, and I think we're going to move back up. I think it's a buy today at the price of $1.74. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we're going to move back up to the middle of the range, which is around $2.35. Um, again, I think you're going to find a similar thought process here. Um, I know that some of you guys go all in on your first uh, trade. I'm going to encourage you to take starter positions and to trade the range. I actually am um, not afraid of Mullen. I kind of like it at these prices. Um, I will give you these technical cautions that I'm giving you here today. Um, so we do have uh, bullish divergence on the RSI, which is positive. We have decreasing volume, that's negative. We've not printed a green buy signal, that's negative. Um, and we have made a uh, lower lows and lower highs right now, okay? Um, but this is, uh, we, are, we, we wanna look at the broader market again. We're looking at the big picture of where the market is and where the opportunities lie. And I think there's an opportunity here. Um, I think that in some past technical Tuesdays, I had mentioned that I had revised my buy order from 205 to 230. Mm -hmm. And as and of course, we're not connected with you guys every day. We're not going, you know, trade by trade with you. But I began to see weakness in it and I shut that one off and lowered it back to two dollars. And so my re-entry position on Mullen after I had sold at 330 
has now at two dollars. And was, do you remember the percentage that you made on that trade? I think that I bought in around two fifty last time and ran it up to three. It went up to three eighty, but I ended up putting a, a trailing stop loss in at three thirty. So yeah, wow. So I made a pretty good gain. That is. Um, and again, that also puts me in a position where, in my mind, I have a little bit of uh, money that's the house's money that I can um, that I'm okay in taking a position because I'm get, I'm getting back in way lower than I had been. Yes. So, um, yeah. all right, let's see what else we were going to cover. Larry, you're gonna have to entertain the people while I find the next stock. So, um, uh, that's easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was just gonna be quiet. I want you to get as much technicals in. Um, listen, I want you to, on Mullen, I want you to do your own research on Mullen, okay? We got your technicals, we want you to do your own fundamentals. Google it, see what's going on with it because that could change everything. Yeah, we know there's a lot of stuff, like it's a puppet company, blah, blah, blah. We've seen and heard it all, but it still has red and green days, okay? Okay, so, well, people want me to cover uh, Nile. All right, um, go ahead. And uh, so I wanna just talk to you guys about what I see when I look at Nile. Because it ran up the other day. Yeah, it, you know, um, for a technical trader, we're looking at accumulation, um, we're looking at markup, distribution, and decline. And uh, I'm just going to tell you guys that I don't see any of that in this stock. Um, this stock, when it went public, whoever the previous investors had been immediately began to sell so. into the retail community. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so there was never that uh, opportunity. I mean, it basically started at decline, mm -hmm. right? So let's look at the charts. So Again, the story that I see in Nile is that we began with decline, which means that the smart money had already accumulated and immediately entered the phase of distribution, right? They, distrib they created distribution here, which just led us into decline. Now we went back to a period of, of uh, consolidation and you see these peaks, right? These are the peaks that get people excited. But the problem that I have with this is that there's no volume here. Okay, which means that the smart money is not reaccumulated. So yes, this particular talk is going to appear pretty negative to people about yeah. Nile. Yeah, well, a lot of you guys have, um, I actually have a, a, a picture in picture here. Let me show you that. Boom, and that's what I, when I do that. Look okay, there, sweet. See here. So, um, uh, but listen, you guys look at that run up. I want you guys to see that run up, right? Uh, go to two days ago. All right, so if we wanna look okay. at like a five day on this, Larry? Yeah, let's go to a five day. I wanna show people something. Okay. okay, let's, yeah. I hate when the chart is flat like that. And when you go, you got to Hey guys, day. if you want to be, this is five days. Okay. If you want to be reminded how to do this, you just, yep, just scroll, scroll on the price section to give yep. your depth to some, sh your chart. Okay. All right, go ahead, Larry. So you guys see five days, go to two trading days ago. All right, yep. pretty much that's going to be in, in this section here. Okay. So this Where? red and this green. Okay, so what happens is where that green stops, that's where, you see that, good people, where that green stops? That's when the most of you guys, a lot of you guys, got back in. Or for those of you that are new, you hear about it. You see that it ran up that day. I was watching it. It ran up. Remember I showed it to yeah, you? Yeah, we were talking about it. Yeah, I was like, look how much it ran up. And I also said, unfortunately, this is where a lot of people are going to enter in. At. That's exactly gonna, what you said to exactly, me. Exactly. You're going to FOMO in, and then it's going to come back down. And exactly what it did right? Don't be tardy for the party, good people. And that's why it's important to watch every video on this page in pages like this, okay? Because you don't want to be buying at the top. Okay, so I want to, so okay, people are like, hey, but I own it. Um, maybe I don't own it. I want, is there any money to be made on it? Is this just all negative talk? Okay, no guys, um, this is the play. If you're interested in playing it or if you're already in it, you guys are looking for these short squeezes. That's what these are, okay? It's when, it's when uh, you know, the people who have shorted this all the way down, when it pops up, they take another short position, right? They ride it back down. That's what, that's what these pops are. Mm -hmm. And at 65 cents, um, if I were to be playing this, I would play it for the short, the little short squeezes we're getting mm -hmm. in here. And there's money to be made all the way up to 350 easy on this. Yes. Now, go back to where the RSI here. Right here. Let me show you this, good people. When it comes to these charts, so you see this RSI. 
it showed you that it was printing a buy signal right here. You mm -hmm. see the run yep. up? Yep. You see the run up? So it printed, boom. If you'd have bought it right here, right, you would have ran up. See, see if the RSI is here at the bottom, good people. And look at now look at the top where the green is. So if you would have bought it here, you would have got that run up, right? But then what is the RSI showing you? It was showing you that it's time to get out. Correct. Right? It's it's right there in front of you, good people. And then it's starting to cool off, right? I just All wanted right. to bring that I up. I think that's a really good point, Larry. Um, so yeah, the only trade I see on this, there is no smart money accumulation on Nile to everyone's disappointment, but there are some short squeeze potentials on that. Yes. I'm going to give you guys some cryptos, okay, before we leave. And we're going to look at ADA. And I'm going to just remind everybody that we do have a buy signal on ADA. Um, Bitcoin has been curving back up. There's a lot of potential. There's a lot of bearish talk and bullish talk. The bulls are nervous mm -hmm. and the bears are nervous. Yes. Nobody's happy right now in right. this market. Uh, but I, let's, let's, I'm going to remind everybody I'm a buyer of ADA under a dollar. Yes. It's that simple. Yeah. If you're expecting to double your money in uh, you know, days, that might not happen. Right. But if you're able to accumulate ADA under a dollar and yeah. you have a little bit of a longer view, I talked about that on one of my videos, even if it's as small as 25 bucks a week, mm -hmm. if you have a little bit longer view, that's, we looked at what a five-year investment would be on $25 a week if all we got was a 70% increase. I believe that ADA under a dollar has a very strong 100% increase. Yes. And so there's a very simple play. We're going to look at one more uh, crypto mm -hmm. for you guys. And while he's looking at that crypto, good people, so ADA under a dollar, Solana under that was, $88. That was my next. That was my next. Oh, man, so, let's go. Yeah. So again, I'm going to just point out the exact same thing. Larry Larry and I never script a video. We're always just here talking with you guys. But again, what, what is Solana? Solana printed a buy signal. Um, and yes, anything under a dollar. Anything. A hundred dollars. hundred dollars. Yes. Anything under a dollar, I'm selling right. the house. Right. right, right. Anything under a hundred dollars for long term, you start, you keep buying it. But if it drops under eighty eight dollars in this time period, because that changes, that's when I load up. Yep. Um, hey, let's look at dot, which is another one that I think people are interested in. Uh, and I'm going to tell you the same thing. It's 1874. And you guys, I don't really, it's not to say these things can't go lower. Um, right. In my opinion, ADA can drop to 75 cents. I'm saying dot under 20. Uh, dot could drop to the 13, 14 dollar range. Those are realistic bottom ranges. But if you want to take a bigger picture, which is one of the things that I, I focused with you guys on long term investing in crypto, mm -hmm. I'm giving you the signal and so is Larry. Exactly. Under a hundred dollars on Solana, under a dollar on ADA, under 20 on DOT. And if you've got a longer term view, those are buys. That's I'm buying. I'm right. buying. It's not a suggestion and, for you to buy. Right. And here's but what I'm I, picking up. Here's what I say. I'll just use Solana as an example. Uh, this is why it's important to have more than one portfolio, right? So if Solana drops to 99 cent, I'm sorry, $99, then yeah, you buy it and get ready for the swing, right? Mm -hmm. That's fine. But if Solana drops under $88, that's when you buy it in two separate portfolios. This makes sense. Because yeah. you're getting it at, uh, technically you're getting it at a price where you may be the bottom for this period. And so you get you buy it there to swing trade it, but you also buy it there for long term because for a long haul, you want it at the bottom price. And so that's what I do. It has made me more money in 2021. I made more money in 2021 than I have in realistically over 30 years of investing by having more than one broker. So make sure you download those links and just deposit $100 into both immediately because what will happen is these moves happen and then you're waiting five days, three days or whatever for your money to clear. Right. Well, hey, we're going to cut it off there. We've yep. covered four stocks for you guys, two cryptos, um, and we've showed you a little bit how we view the charts. Uh, please take a minute to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Uh, again, check out those two links, uh, Weeble and, and um, Moomoo. Moomoo, and begin to cash up because we've got uh, trades that we're going to begin to introduce on each of them. And Larry hit it. I have long-term automated crypto investing yes, and you do too absolutely and i have uh swing crypto investing 
And I do the same thing with stocks. And I have found that it is easier to kind of have these different places in which I'm doing those functions. Exactly. But hope that you uh, enjoyed this video and uh, appreciate you uh, letting us be part of your journey. You'd be blessed.